Welcome to the Wonder Show. I am Noah Searte, your host. Okay, I hope you hope you dug that intro. Um, I like to believe like I can cut a rug, but I have hardwood floors, so I can't really tell. All right. So thank you again for tuning in. Uh, for those who are first timers, welcome. For those who are coming back, especially welcome. I appreciate you coming back. Um, so first things first, some housekeeping. I want to reflect on last week's show. Uh, Sulema Balderas Padilla, uh, she was my guest last week on the Wonder Show episode four, and so I appreciate her for for coming along. I think it was a beautiful, beautiful um, discussion, a lot of good resources. If you didn't catch that, you can catch it on either No Arte on Facebook, Latino Center of uh, Arts and Culture, or uh, Sacramento Artist Corps. So you can always go back and see those episodes, and I think it was a really, really worthy one. And I, uh, when I talked to her afterwards, uh, she she agreed to come back. I want to have her back. And I think there's much more to talk about. And she's just a really, really good resource for for a lot of things, health, uh, emotional health, stability, strength, and beauty overall. And a lot of her little seeds are implanted in a lot of youth or now that people have grown up and uh, she's been in the dance group. And so she's kind of been that uh, role model for a lot of people, including myself. And so, yeah, I, I just thought that was a really, really good episode. So if you didn't catch it, go check back out that one for Sulema Balderas Padilla, that conversation, okay? And I do recommend if you have a pen and paper, because we're going to do a little exercise later on if you want to take notes. There's a couple of things. Um, I think today's Wonder Show, I want to uh, kind of focus on the the mind, the brain, what your, where your wonder is at and breaking down a little bit those ideas, but also these little uh, exercises in order to understand how to relate these to youth, to young people. And if you have little ones in the house, then I think this is kind of the show that hopefully you can kind of find a way to kind of use these tools um, for those little ones, okay? And those little seedlings in our life, okay? And so first things I want to make sure the cdc.gov for everything latest corona. So what we're doing here is... We're uniting against COVID. So this is a big project, this live stream on top of a bunch of different projects, uh, theater, photography, um, music. There's all these different movements going on uh, with the Sac Sacramento Artist Corps uh, that are, we're trying to promote just safety, but also keep the creatives creative during this time. And so Sacramento Artist Corps organized this together and and the city of Sacramento Arts and uh It'll be at the end. You got to excuse me on that. Arts and uh, the Department of Arts and Culture, they gave us a fund to to get this moving and get this going. And and so hopefully we keep everybody safe. And so for everything nationally, CDC, Center for Disease Control and Prevention gov. OK, check that out to see what's the latest about that and just health in general on a national scale. OK, but locally, the Sac County Department of Health and Services have a, a lot of a lot of resources there. Um, whether it's uh, therapy or just you want to know what the numbers are, maybe some uh, some stations, some testing sites, you can check it there. And just want to give a shout out to the Latino Center of Art and Culture. They do a lot of good for the community. They're actually doing a fundraiser uh, for our brothers and sisters in Honduras. who are going through a lot of struggle right now um, based on their what happened over there with the, the natural disaster. And so if we can put out a helping hand, check out their Instagram and see how you can help. But Latino Center is doing some good work 
over there. Okay. And my own little plug, I just want to encourage you to shop small. I know that the, the holidays are coming. There's a lot of, I want to call it pressure to buy gifts and all that, but gifts are valid all year long. But in this case, if you have the tradition of celebrating and, and buy gifts for one another, that's, that's all beautiful too. I think it's a, it's a worthy practice and tradition, but if you're going to do it, um, your neighbors need some help. And so, so the local businesses need our patronizing. So if you can either buy uh, something from there, or if it's a restaurant, maybe see if you can buy a gift card and gift that to somebody, but something to help them get through the season, which is already difficult for businesses anyways. And so go see if you can help out somehow, but try to keep it local as much as you can. Or I even encourage you, make it yourself, make something yourself and gift that something that comes from the heart and don't worry about results, just worry about process. And we're going to talk a lot about process today. Okay. And most of all, the wonder show is just here to tickle that wonder to stimulate you in order to make sure that you have a purpose in your life. Um, Cause we all kind of have a little something that gives us purpose, right? Everybody has that little wonder in their head, but I think it can be stimulated more. And, and sometimes we have that wonder it might be a little stale or frozen. And so if you ever wonder what it was like to write, what it's like to write a book or write a song or run a half marathon, whatever it is, I'm talking more so about things that are particular to me, but whatever your wonder is in your life, and hopefully that helps because we have a lot to live for. And another uh, resource I want to always promote for each wonder show is the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, which is this resource that you can utilize if it's the last resort. I mean, you have people, you have community around you, you can ask for help, but there's a resource right there. And yeah, if all else goes, but the mo mostly I just want to make sure everyone's safe out there. You're, you feel secure, you feel healthy you feel well. And so there's just something right there. If you ever need a boost, if you ever need an ear to talk to at any time of the day, it is 24 seven. And I got some more resources coming up a little bit later. Okay. Locally. So this is a national lifeline. All right, here we go. So that'll stay right there. So let me see. So first things first, I want to show you this thing called the hand model. Okay. So we're going to go right into this wonder. And this is a good way, a good hand model to, to talk to our young ones about emotions and how to reflect and how to understand where we are emotionally at a certain moment. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain this as much as I can, but if you look up Dr. Daniel Siegel's hand model on YouTube, he, he, explain, he explains it much more eloquently. And so, but I'll do my best because this has been something we've been utilizing at our work. I work at a preschool. And so this is just something that helps us as educators, but also as the young for the young ones. Um, so the hand model, this is just the hand model right here. So the idea is this is your this represents your spinal cord leading up to the to the limbic system. Okay, I have my notes up here, so I'm be peeking the whole time. Okay, and this is your limbic system, your limbic area. So the spinal cord and the limbic area, and right here, this is where your uh, arousal. This is where arousal is stimulated, okay? This is where you get your arousal from, where your fight, flight, or freeze mode is, because we all have that fight, flight, or freeze, and whatever you are, it's valid. It's just what happens right here, okay? And then we have the upper part, which is the cortex. This is the reason. This is the reason that you have in your body, in your mind, about what's gonna happen, what you think is gonna happen, your rationale, right? And it's over those, those emotions, that, uh, that arousal system right there. Okay, and there's that brain. And this front part right here regulates that whole system. It regulates that whole system. So the reason why I think this is it, this is good for wonder because sometimes we just don't know where these emotions come from. I feel like I'm really bright. Yeah, all right. Right here, so this is where all the, uh, if, if you're wondering where your reactions come from, this is just a simple way to maybe talk about it to yourself and understand it. And this is another way to kind of explain to your young ones how to verbalize what's going on in their own mind and you can utilize this for them to explain it to you where they are so in this frontal part right here the front regulates the system so what happens let's say you get really frustrated at your young one or just at life in general or something that happens we call it flipping your lid okay you flip your lid and what do you show you show off your emotions so their rationale and everything goes out the door okay so now we have to do work at being super flexible and rational and bring that back like that, okay? 
So if there's ever a way to kind of measure that system or your ideas about what's happening to yourself, then you can maybe, you know, talk to your kid, like, where are you? Like, are you flipping your lid? Like, how close are you to flipping your lid? And it takes a process. It is a process to teach this, maybe to kind of understand it, but it helps if you work it out. If you teach this to them um, by modeling it, by explaining how you're feeling, right? So again, here's the arousal area, the, our emotions, fight, flight, or freeze, right? Then we got the top, uh, upper part cortex. This is where thought and reason comes from, the frontal uh, lobe, which regulates right behind your right behind your forehead. That's what regulates the system. So whenever something like emotionally happens and boom, you flip your lid and then it takes work to kind of come back. And the idea is we want to kind of stay in that system, in that mode like that. Okay. And that's the Dr. Daniel Siegel hand model. Okay. Just a, a little tool in order to kind of understand visually and physically what's going on in that beautiful brain of yours and how that wonder is working. Okay. And again, this, this is just a nice little exercise that you can maybe uh, teach to your young ones and let them know and give them a visual so that, that way they can explain to you maybe where they're at and maybe they can need a break. They say like, oh, my, my lid's about to flip and I need a little break. Or you can tell them that yourself. I need a little break. And there you go. So it's a tool for measuring. Let me get a, a little sip of H2O. So how's everybody doing out there? Let me see some comments. Or if you have any tools about, uh, or even questions, I was thinking about that. Like if you have any sort of questions about anything, put them in those comments and we'll see if we can answer them, okay? Fabiola, hola Fabiola. Re Lincoln representing in the house. Thank you Fabiola for tuning in. So we're gonna go into the next topic, okay? And again, if you just joined us, grab yourself a pen and paper. We're gonna do a little exercise later on to kind of break down a process in your head, okay? Ruben, my StreamYard mentor, mentor. Here we go. So I had the opportunity, the blessing, to, to hear this young man at a conference. Um, here he is right here, Dr. Stuart Brown, an expert on play, if that's such a thing, but he did study it. And this young man, I had a chance to hear him speak at a conference about the importance of play. And I thought it was such a such an enlightening um, topic because he he kind of broke it down into why play is important in our lives and not just in our lives, but in the lives of all species, because he, he gave a lot of examples. He, he showed a uh, different play in different species within cross species. Right. And he called this a, a um, share play. We also have another style of play is uh, object play which we, these are all things we do too. And we have like spatial slash uh, physical play on top of verbal play. We have all types of play in our lives. And to me, play is super, super important. And Dr. Uh, Stuart Brown does a beautiful job. Again, you can find him on YouTube and find a lot of things. I think this is a big key to your own wonder. What is play to you? Because all people have play into their adult, adulthood and and so that brings a question to to you what is play time for you okay so as a kid i used to have or ask a lot of people invite a lot of people to draw with me and i would hear this a lot this would be the maybe the most common thing i would hear about drawing is man i used to i used to draw a lot when i was a kid and that key phrase i used to i used to draw a lot and thinking like well why'd you stop and so all these things about time and and work and and I'm tired and all that stuff. But, you know, I think the things we do naturally as a kid is a key to what can make us happy as adults, right? Or I call, you know, adults, because we're all just babies, man. We all just have a baby emotions in our body with these, you know, thicker shells and we're just tense, right? And babies and kids are just flexible and they're fluid and they move around and they play and they don't care, right? They don't care about what someone else thinks and they want to play with everybody. So, if we can kind of model that too and figure out what is play for you. So let me know what what do you do at home or in your spare time or in general? So it could be you take pictures, maybe you like to do yoga, whatever feels like play to you, share with me. I'd like to know. And we can we can talk about it. Or just get some ideas. 
so his talk about play, um, how, how important it is for building confidence and problem solving. So kids usually like they have to figure out what their limits are, right? Physically and emotionally, because sometimes the play doesn't go their way. And, and so I think it's super important for, for the kids to engage in play. And he, he believes that uh, preschools should allow the kids to rough and tumble and, and almost jump on each other and all that because it, it teaches them their limits and their responsibility with one another and, and who they are, right? And it gives you a sense of confidence. Fabiola, my friend Fabiola says, I still collect toys. Yes, yes, collections. You know, your fascinations into things. You know, kids like to pick up rocks and take take rocks. I do recommend, actually, I had this idea recently. Uh, thank you, Fabiola, for sharing that. Um, about maybe buying your kid when they get of a certain age to to get a bag. And when you go to the park, allow them to collect things. So that way, when you put them in the bag, you collect them. And then you make it your, your adventure bag so that when you go home, um, then you can revisit the day based on what they collected and ask them questions so that way they reflect on what's happening and i think that uh, that'll be super helpful to stimulate and make them feel self-confident about what they did what they're collecting what they're fascinated about and it gives you insight into into them and fabula says and yes i do play with them it's a great way to bond with the kids i agree no shame we all have toys i think i have my own toys and markers like i like markers and paint brushes and and all types of stuff I, I like I like short stories and books. I'm not a I'm not a big long reader, but but I mean we call them children's books, but they're books. And and I like I like short stories and stories that get to the point and beautiful visuals. And also uh, a key word that Dr. Stuart Brown mentions, he says niyatni, niyatni. It's a noun, the retention of immature qualities in adulthood. And humans are the most neotenous out of all the species. Okay, that means that we're able to take our play and extend it throughout our lifetime. And you can see it all over the place. You might have an elder in your community that's really silly and goofy and, and yeah, everybody just has their form of play, whether it's verbal play, telling jokes or whatever it is, right? And, and I think I appreciate those type of people. Sarcasm is a type of play. And, you know, get a group of friends together who've known each other for a long time and you kind of see that play in effect. And I'm sure like, you know, they're just refined. They've always been that those those kids or those, you know, I'll call them kids together because, you know, the people we meet when we're young, you just never seem to lose that that mojo and that fluidity with one another. OK, so again, I think it's super, super important for that wonder uh, in order to or for that play in order to stimulate that wonder, to continue into that life and and figure out what is play for you in the here and now. So I, I would still like to know. So if you if you want to put in what is play for you, let me know. I think it'll be worth knowing. And then he also poses the question, imagine a life without play. So if we had a whole world of people who did not play, what would that look like? Right. I think it's a it's a harsh reality. It'd be a harsh reality just because. I don't know. Makes me sad to think about it. My my Marie says how to play in a time of COVID in a time of COVID. Beautiful question. Beautiful question. So I think that's up to each and every individual. Right. Um, maybe your form of play was to go salsa dancing and now it's kind of hard but there's still a way to salsa dance in your home, maybe by yourself. Obviously it's not the same, but I think it's still valid to dance by yourself and work on your steps. And especially if you have your own little bubble, teach somebody salsa, right? Here's, a, here's an opportunity for those who don't know how to dance or don't have the rhythm as much as you'd like to, don't, that don't spin you around and all that stuff. Teach them how to, right? That's a good question because I think perhaps um, your form of play was maybe cut off or limited because of this COVID time. And so I think it's a good time to figure out what is play for you, because if any if any time we need it now during this pandemic, when, you know, maybe our space is limited, our accessibility is limited. And I would even recommend to check out the Sacramento Parks and Recreations, cityofsacramento.org slash parks and rec. They do have a, a handful of uh, online courses or online um, tutorials. What do you call them? Webinars. Right. 
So they are adapting to the times. And I think it's super important to to tap into them because not only are they showing you what is accessible um, in the parks, which they have Wi-Fi as far as I remember, they just open up a, a whole lot of Wi-Fi uh, spots, hot spots in different parks. So that way you can go out there if you got to work, work outside maybe for a day, right? So, but the parks, they're communal, they're beautiful. It's infectious to see people walking around and all that. Brisa, Brisa says, we dance off in, off in our living room. Showed my twins last night simple basics of swing and salsa. Awesome, Brisa. That's beautiful. No, thank you for sharing it. And I think that's super important because, you know, if your kids see you dancing, if you dance with them, it builds that bond, that self-confidence. And it also, you know, we, we, we practice that play with one another, right? We share that play, right? Because maybe that's your form of play, but not theirs. And then you can maybe take turns and they can pick playtime next time. Whatever playtime is, whether it's video games, maybe toys, um, Play-Doh coloring, right? We can, we can share play like that. And it just develops confidence. So thank you, Brisa, for sharing that. That's a beautiful, beautiful story. So Parks and Rec, check it out. Okay. So again, Dr. Stuart Brown, if you don't know, now you know the importance of, let me put that up, the importance of play. You can, the importance of play. So you can check him out on YouTube. He has a lot of, a lot of really good uh, talks. He does have a TED Talk. And... A lot of valuable information, but I think just kind of solidifies why being playful is important and uh, he intellectualizes it, right? But I think we all know it. I think it just takes time to kind of reflect on what is play for you and do it, right? This is the time to do it, especially if you've ever like wondered, like, ah, oh, man, I wish, I wonder what it's like to, to do a cartwheel. I haven't done a cartwheel in whatever, how many years, like put in the chat box. When's the last time you did a cartwheel? I want to see. Hopefully it's a week ago. All right. So this is the point, the part where I do recommend bring out a pen and paper because this is going to be a little interactive. Okay. This part right here. So if you got a pen and paper, a sobre, anything like that, you can get a half sheet of paper. You can get a, a, a box that you're not using. And just you're going to write some stuff down, okay? Because this exercise is pretty, pretty, pretty good, I think. I learned this at a conference years ago, okay? And before I get into that, so before I let go of this um, this ticker right here, which way? That way. Um, I want to make sure you understand the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, free to everyone, there for everybody, okay? But we also have a, a local uh, supporting youth sorry supporting mental health for the youth okay it's called the source it is a, a hotline as well and it has the option to text so if you got it if you have a, a young one especially teenagers because it might be a difficult time for teenagers you can kind of put that in your phone and check them out they do have a website so just put in the source or stop stigma sacramento stop stigma stigma sacramento is a um so they have on the website says mental illness knows no race, religion, economic status, or age. One in five adults will experience a diagnosable mental health condition in their lifetime. So and must and most never seek help because of the stigma and shame. And maybe some of it's cultural, some of it's you know from the home or even just yourself. So check out their website. They do have connection to the source, but also just check them out. It is a local. Um, a local branch, a local resource. So check them out if you're in the Sacramento Sacramento area, and I'll and I'll shine that later on too as well. Okay, so here we go. Let me get this guy in. Here we go. The five whys. Okay, so here's your here's your uh, your your duties. So your task, not duties, duties. So. We're gonna do the five why. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna write down uh, one challenge. Oh, before we get to that, trust the process, okay? When I say trust the pr process, I mean, try not to overthink it. Just keep it simple for the beginning part. And I'll tell you when to think or think about it a little more, okay? So please, please trust the process, okay? Trust yourself in this process. 
okay? So first thing you're gonna do is write down a challenge you have been facing in your life currently, okay? So stimulate that wonder, wonder, wonder about yourself. What has been a challenge in your life currently? So it could be as simple. I'll give you mine. Mine is, no sé, this challenge is my closet is messy. I tend to have a, a messy closet. So that's my challenge right now. And I've noticed this, this has been something for, for not even before COVID. So whatever a challenge is in your life right now, and you know, it could be as simple as I need new shoes or uh, it could be about your diet, whatever it is, whatever it is, uh, write down your challenge at the top, okay? And if you wouldn't mind, if you want to share what your challenge is, because it'd be interesting to see your before and after type of thing. I'll, and I'll, I'll show you what that means in a little bit. Okay. So here we go. So I'm going to give maybe like a minute or two for each one. Okay. I hope you're a fast writer. And if anything, you can always come back uh, to this episode on one of the sites and check it out again, but you'll get the gist of it. So five whys. Here we go. First why. So we're going to turn that challenge into a question. Okay, turn that challenge into a question. Why is my closet messy? So turn your challenge into a, a why. So mine is, why is my closet messy? Okay, so here's why I wonder. So here's what we're going to wonder. Why is my closet messy? So give yourself three becauses and keep them super simple. You don't have to reflect on them too much. Again, just trust the process. Don't overcomplicate it. So because I throw my clothes instead of putting them in their place, it's just easier. Because I have too many clothes, I think that's something I can get rid of. I don't wear, I probably wear 20% of the clothes I have, right? And because I don't have time to put them away. Let me share this bigger, actually. There you go. Because I don't have time to put them away. Okay, so here are my three becauses, my three reasons why I think my closet is messy. So write down your three. And while we do that, Marie says, wow, Parks and Rec Department, love it. Yes, Marie. I think uh, Sacramento has a whole lot of beautiful parks, Lamb Park being one of them. I think that's an obvious one because of all the resources they have, but also uh, Hal Park. I'm a big fan of Hal Park. They have a creek running through it. They have Frisbee golf, a nice recreation or a, a community center. And yeah, just a lot of really cool resources there too, but all types of parks are beautiful, communal spaces, right? So there's, there's my first wife. So now, after you write down your three becauses, your three reasons, you're gonna pick one, okay? So I pick my, I throw my clothes instead of putting them in their place, okay? And then what we're gonna do next is turn that one, turn that because into a question. Why do I throw my clothes instead of putting them in their place? So now you took your, your answer for the first why and made it into another why. So this is our why number two. Why do I throw my clothes instead of putting them in their place? So here's my becauses, okay? Based on my challenge. Because it's easier and I'll do it later. It's easier for me just to throw them in the closet because I don't care about the mess. I really don't care about mess. Um, yeah, sometimes I let messes just be for a long time and then every once in a while I'll just can be like, all right, I have a lot of work to do and I feel like I need a clean space. Because they are dirty anyways and I guess that's just part of the reason, again, these reasons don't have to be rational. You don't have to overthink them. Um, just put them down. Again, it's just a matter of just wondering, okay, why? Why am I having this, this challenge? Or just maybe answer that why for yourself, okay? And again, thank you for all who tuned in. So I appreciate all you. So we're on our second why. Um, Again, trust the process, don't overthink it, keep them short. I think it's easier if you keep them short uh, so that way you don't you don't overthink these things. So we're not answering this why specifically, okay? So trust this process just like trust yourself. Here we go. Next one, next why, ready? So, so I chose because I don't care about the mess, okay? So my reason I'm gonna choose for this one is because I don't care about this mess, okay? So I'm gonna now, for my why number three, I'm gonna change that into the question, why don't I care about the mess? So write down, make your second why or your second reason into a question. Third why, why don't I care about the mess? So here's my reasons. 
because my mind is pretty messy anyways. I got a lot of ideas. My 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 whole deal is cluttered anyways, but little by little I'm figuring out how to work with it. And it's a gift, I think. At least that's how I rationalize it. Because th disorder doesn't bother me, right? Disorder doesn't really bother me as much. You know, I think it helps, um, but disorder doesn't really get to me. And because I live alone, I really don't have to worry about someone else, kind of someone else's space. It is my space. And so, yeah, that's my rationale. Okay, so I'll put your three becauses. And again, this is this is not a an opportunity for you to, I mean, I guess it is, but don't consider this like questioning yourself. It's just a matter of a process, a process of how your mind is working. And maybe to dig we're digging deeper into that that wonder about this challenge that you're having, okay? So again, this is not about right or wrong. This is this is about just is. This is what it is for you. And there's no shame in it because you're here, you're present, and I appreciate you and, and you should appreciate yourself for even, let's say, taking the time to do this little exercise right here because all you're going to get out of it is a, an experience and take it or leave it after this. But again, this could be something you could uh, share with your young ones. You know, it maybe doesn't have to be as complicated, but just, you know, it's a nice little breakdown. Okay, so here's what I picked. My third why. Why don't I care about the mess? So I picked for myself because I live alone. I think that was just the more, the more rational. I was like, well, yeah, I live alone, so I just don't care, and I just throw it in the closet. No sweat off my back. Why number four, change that into why do I live alone? Okay, so here are my three, my three becauses, my three porques. Porque I like doing things in my way without bothering people. I think it's just a lot easier not to have roommates. Okay, and also because I want to live how I want to live. All right. Again, when I want, when I put myself through this exercise for this for this presentation, I, I didn't want to overthink it. I just put myself right. Just write down what comes what comes out, and it could be selfish or it could be whatever. But it is what it is, because my alone time is important, and that's my third because. All right. So answer your fourth why with three becauses. Okay. Again, we're going through this challenge about breaking down this challenge with the five Y exercise. Okay, and maybe with your young ones, you can turn this into a, a, a the two Ys, right? Or in general, I think it's important um, to ask your young ones questions that don't involve a yes or no answer. It's easy to say yes or no. Are you hungry? Yes. Are you tired? No. What do you want? I, mean, it's, <laughs> I ran out of questions to ask. But the important part is you want them to verbalize and explain and process and hear their opinion, especially when they're little, little ones. It's not just yes or no. It's important to ask um, more con more detailed questions. And these whys are super important. So that way they understand their own reasoning, right? And we can help them with that. So here we go. So my fourth why is why do I live alone? The reason I picked is because my alone time is important, okay? That's my answer to my fourth why, okay? So I hope you're with me. If you're not, it's okay. I'm going to move on for the sake of time, even though we have plenty of it, I'm sure, but I don't want to take more, more of your time than is really needed, okay? Because you got families and things to do and sleeps to get. So my fifth why, so here is the why that we are going to answer a little more um, a little, a little longer. We're going to think a little more into our fifth why. Okay. Why is my alone time important? So this is our last why. This is our fifth why. And you're going to answer this question with a little more understanding, a little more detail. Okay. And dig a little deeper. And so here's what I got for why is my alone time important? Because I get to reflect on my own personal being without feeling the need to consider another's feelings or presence. So I realized, um, People are important to me, but I'm very important to me too. And I, and I had to learn how to kind of create that balance between, all right, man, I need to recharge. And, and I know I need to recharge because sometimes I can feel it. And, and it might come in naps and it might come in, man, I need to go for a run or something like that. And that's time for me. And it's nice not to 
worry about someone else's feelings. And it sounds selfish because it is. It's very selfish. And I think it's very valid. So if you ever need that alone time, especially if you have a family or, or a loved one or a partner, I think it's a very valid thing because I think th this has gotten in the way. Not understanding this has gotten in the way of past relationships with me, not knowing how to ask for time away without hurting the other one. Okay. And I realized it was because I did worry about how they felt, but I put their feelings ahead of mine, or I just didn't know how to verbalize it and how to express um, this part. Okay. So as you finish this, this last why, okay, here's a little reflection. So allow yourself to go back. So where I started, why is my closet mess messy? So that was my first why. Why is my closet messy? My fifth why, I ended up with the answer because I get to reflect on my own personal being without feeling the need to consider another's feelings or presence. So it's a little, this, this five why um, exercise is just to kind of break down a little more, kind of get deeper into maybe it's not about the closet <laughs> or, I mean, it is. But also just to understand, you know, there's something else at play, but this is just an exercise for you to kind of dig a little deeper and see where, where this can go. And I think putting your kids into this exercise or maybe yourself every once in a while, just give yourself this time. And again, let me show you this. Trust your process. Okay. It's not about being right. It's just about understanding yourself a little better. So that's what I mean about the wonder. Okay. Take time to wonder about yourself in this exercise could be a tool for that to allow yourself to wonder about yourself, okay? And and also that play, that play is gonna give you an opportunity to wonder about yourself, you know, without you even noticing it. Super, super important. Let me get back to this thing, okay? So that was the five why exercise. And if you, if you don't mind sharing, tell me where you started and where you ended up. If you don't mind, if you do, that's okay, because ultimately it's just for you. This exercise is just for you, okay? So finishing off while I round this out, if you wanna share anything, okay? Just remember, it is about trusting your process, okay? Trust your process and play, trust your process and, and reflection, okay? And figure out what that process is, right? Because I think it's, as we're evolving as, as people in general, you're evolving as what your role is in that community, in this community. And so it's important to understand your process and trust it, right? And I think it's important to break that down and figure out what your process is. Because ultimately, each individual is a living, breathing philosophy. This gentleman um, dropped this knowledge uh, a while back at a conference, and I thought it was beautiful. He said, each child is a living, breathing philosophy. And I thought that was a beautiful way to put who we are as people, as individuals, and to consider ourselves, man, there's no answers. There's no, there's no manual for, for this, for this, and for this, and for this. But you have to try to line them all up together, make sure they're, they're working along the same fluid motion, right? And outward and inward, okay? So just understand, understand that how you think and how you feel matters, but also like other people are out here too, trying to trying to help you out and figure you, figure you out so it helps if you can express yourself uh, directly in a healthy way, at least. And I'm mostly, mostly speaking about myself so I can remind myself, okay? So that concludes the fifth installment of The Wonder Show. I appreciate you all for tuning in, for checking this out. I want to give a couple of shout outs to Sacramento365, sacramento365.com. Follow them on Instagram for any events that are coming up in Sacramento, COVID friendly, of course, but they're, they've been really good. At every, every weekend, they always put out uh, what's going to happen this week and this weekend. And they've also actually been shouting out the, the Wonder Show. So I want to give them a shout out too, because I have been following them for a while and their website's pretty good based on how you can break down what events are going on around town, whether it's family friendly, free movies, art, music. Obviously, it's a little different during this pandemic but they can stimulate that wonder if you ever wondered, man, I wonder what, what kind of shows are playing um, this weekend. So check out Sacramento 365, okay? And follow the Sacramento Artist Corps on Facebook and Instagram. They're gonna, they, they've gonna they been having a lot more features about the artists and creatives who are, who are at work right now because we are uniting against COVID. Let me put my banner up again. We are 
uniting against COVID to put the message out there and make sure people are good to try to entertain and also stimulate um, just like this show. You know, hopefully you get things out of it, but also it, these shows aren't as much if you don't participate with us. And these are your local peoples, your community expressing and doing their thing. OK, so we want to make sure. And we have a lot of young ones in the group, too. So make sure you're shouting them out and help them out. And you can follow me on No Se Arte Facebook and Instagram. Or you can see my YouTube, No Se Arte Life, on YouTube and see my silly, silly little adventures. OK. And again, I appreciate you all. Sorry, before we end up, next show. There we go, next show. On Sunday, the 22nd at 9 p.m., I'll be talking to one of our local businesses, talking about businesses and supporting. I'll be talking to a local business about what it's like to, to work in this pandemic and survive, because they are surviving right now. But again, it's, it's never easy for, especially a local business, family owned. <clears throat> And I want to make sure we highlight them. And also just here, if you ever if you ever been one to think about what it's like to run a business in general, then tune in on Sunday and I'll have Sergio and family from Barrio Cafe in Southland Park. OK, so thank you again for tuning in. Marie says, gracias. I appreciate you, Marie. She's she's a proud supporter of all the all the streamers. So thank you. And. Fabio, this is giving me a great exercise to help me understand when the kids have a bad day to help us have these conversations. Yes, that's ultimately what it is. Just learning how to have these conversations, not only with yourself, but with your young ones, especially your young ones, right? Because we want to make sure we model behavior and leave a nice legacy of mental and emotional stability and health, right? Because ultimately, all the things that we do become genetic too, not just, you know, our features, but our actions, our actions become genetic because they pass them down and some, and we don't know where they're coming from. They, they could be coming from a trauma from way back when. And we want to make sure we, we help that process to heal. Right. And so thank you, Fabiola. She says, thank you. So I thank you too. Thank you so much, Suli. Suli, there's my guest from last week. So if you didn't, again, if you didn't tune into last week, you can always catch it on one of our, our streams, either No Se Arte, Sacramento Arts Court or Latino Center for Arts and Culture. And, yeah, and that was a really beautiful episode. If you like this episode, these ex exercises and resources, check out that episode. And she dropped a lot of really good knowledge. And we will have her back. Okay. Abelardo Jefe, thanks for sharing your knowledge. It's mutual, guy. Okay. He's one of our, our leaders in our community. And Maria, she says, thank you for the number. I want to find a place for my daughter to talk to someone. Yes, and especially I think a good feature for that is the texting feature because, you know, kids might might feel more comfortable with that. So I think it's a nice start. Whatever helps these young ones to, to reach out in any way. But it does it does come with um, a little bit of confidence to understand, like, there are ways, there are resources for these young ones. So thank you for taking that number down and, and validating that resource because, yeah, we all need that help every once in a while. So it's all good. Okay. Beautiful. I appreciate you. Okay. So thank you again, friends. Thank you, peoples. Do your thing. Trust your process. Okay. Live your life and stimulate that wonder. Keep tickling that wonder and hopefully keep coming back and we'll see if we can tickle that, keep tickling that wonder here at the show or any of the live streamers we have um, in this, in this process. Okay. Thank you again, friends. Have a beautiful day. We are on our way. <music> I wonder about it.